I'm away tomorrow. Okay, thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to call this pre-Christmas meeting of Heritage Oakville to order and to welcome everybody here and to welcome any members of the public who may be watching us on the live stream from home. Um, if you are doing that and you don't have a copy of the agenda, you can go to oakville.ca and a copy of the agenda can be found there so you can follow on what we're dealing with today. Um, delegations are expected to register before the meeting and we have one delegation who has registered, but other members of the public in attendance at the meeting may delegate um, if they wish during the course of the meeting. Um, we, the, I would remind delegates that they have 10 minutes to address the matter before us. Um, we have three discussion items today and two agenda items, and I would remind everybody that we are an advisory committee and that any recommendations we make will go to council at its meeting on January the 23rd of next year, and they will make their final decisions based on that. Uh, Madam Secretary, do we have any regrets for today's meeting? No, Mr. Chairman, there are no regrets. Good. And I'm glad to see Councillor Duddock uh, has managed to join us um, virtually, which used to be the way we were doing all of our meetings a while ago. Okay, are there any declarations of pecuniary interest with respect to any matter before us today? Nope. So, confirmation of the minutes of our last meeting, November the 29th, 2022. These were circulated. Are there any comments? Would somebody like to give me a motion? Brenda, thank you. Is anyone, any further discussion on the motion? Anyone opposed to the adoption of the minutes? No, nope, the minutes are adopted. So, our first discussion item is item 4.1, a heritage application permit for 407 Trafalgar Road, and that's Carolyn. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning, members of the committee. So yes, our first one is a heritage permit application for 407 Trafalgar Road, uh, located, oops, located within the Trafalgar Road Heritage Conservation District on the east side of Trafalgar Road. The property contains a circa 1855 two-story uh, Tudor Revival style stucco house that was um, built and owned by the Chisholm family in the 19th century. And the application is to demolish the existing one-story detached garage in the rear yard and to construct a new one-story addition with the garage included in this space uh, as well as some living space behind uh, in about the same location as the existing garage. So here's a view of the property from Trafalgar Road, and you can see the existing garage just behind uh, the black gates there at the rear of the property. So this view will stay similar, but the garage will be closer up um, on the property at the back wall of the Heritage Building. This is the existing garage to be replaced. And this is looking at the back of the property. So we're looking towards Trafalgar Road. Uh, the door that you see there will be removed and the cladding fixed in that area. And where you see the stucco portion to the right, this is where the new addition of the garage will link into the house. In the photo on the right-hand side is a view of where the uh, new addition will link in. So looking at the site plan, Trafalgar Road is to your left. So the existing house is in dark gray. And you can see in a dotted line, the top right-hand corner, the outline of the existing garage. And so the new addition um, will be included in that space and the new garage portion will be to the left of that. It will go up just to the rear um, uh, back portion of the existing house and the existing driveway will remain in place. A view from Trafalgar Road. So again, the garage will be um, still visible from Trafalgar Road. It will be higher in height. You can see the dotted outline of the existing garage. So it'll be a little bit higher. They're proposing traditional coach house doors and wood shingle cladding to match the shingle cladding on the house. This is looking from the rear of the property. Again, the one story uh, living space portion and the section that connects to the heritage house. And you can see that dotted line where the door is to be removed. And then this is looking from the interior of the property. So facing into the rear yard, they're proposing French doors and glass, uh, and then a, a single door going into the garage and mudroom area. 
And then this is a view from the north. Again, no uh, windows or doors. These are right along the property line. You can see the dotted line is the location of the existing fence um, that will remain there. So in terms of the heritage assessment, looking at the guidelines of the district plan, um, the new addition meets all of those guidelines. It's located to the rear of the property in the house. It's only one story, has, so has a very low visual impact. Um, very minimal impact and change to the streetscape uh, view from Trafalgar Road. And the design of it and the materials are considered to be complementary to the heritage house and meet the guidelines of the district plan. Uh, there were minor variances approved by the Committee of Adjustment for the rear yard and side yard setbacks to permit the garage to be tucked back into that corner, uh, which Heritage was supportive of because it's got has a less of an impact on the Heritage House. So the staff recommendation is for approval of the Heritage Permit, subject to uh, pretty standard conditions, the first being that the final details on the cladding windows and doors be submitted to Heritage Planning staff for approval, and that materials to be removed as part of this proposal be made available for salvage, um, be, knowing that the existing garage is to be demolished. I'm happy to answer any questions, and I believe we have the applicant here as well who can answer questions. Okay, thank you, Carolyn. Um, I think we'll be relying on uh, um, item A of your recommendation to deal with the reference to, to vinyl cladding on the windows in the application. Uh, don't think vinyl cladding would be acceptable to the committee, so I'll leave you yes. to deal with that. Through you, Mr. Chair, we will ensure, um, in terms of windows, we are always looking for aluminum clad or wood windows, um, and so we will work with the applicants uh, to ensure that those final details come in and meet those guidelines. Okay, good, thank you. Okay, any questions of, of Carolyn? No? Oh, good. Uh, does the applicant wish to say anything at this stage? No, you don't have to. If you think it's all been covered, it's, you don't have to say anything. <laughs> okay, right, thank you. Um, okay, so there are no further questions, so we're confined to the board. Any discussion on this item? Jerry? Um, through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this is item 4.1. It's a fairly low-key and modest one-story wrap. Um, around in the round at the, the rear of the building, um, I think it's for a uh, home office. Uh, there's no significant presence on Trafalgar as it's uh, set back quite a ways from the house. Uh, the only comment I would make is that uh, the roof slopes could be steeper to echo the slopes of the existing house. Um, that's, that's the only comment I would make. Would you like to give me a motion? Yes, I would. A motion to, uh, may I make a motion to accept uh, staff recommendation? Okay, thank you, Jerry. So our, our motion is couched in the same terms as the staff recommendation that you have in your report. Is there any further discussion on that motion? Is there anyone opposed to that motion? The motion is carried, thank you. Sorry, Mr. Chairman, who was the mover? I'm sorry? Who was the mover? Jerry. Okay, the next item um, is a heritage permit application. Um, wait till I get my hold of my agenda again. For 78 Allen Street, and I guess that's Carolyn again. Thank you. Yes, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. It should be item 4.278, Alan. There we are, perfect. Um, so this is 78 Allen Street. Uh, it's a part four property located uh, at the corner, the southwest corner of Robinson Street and Allen Street. So close to the old Oakville district, but outside of it. Uh, and it is individually designated by bylaw 2021-072. So a fairly recent uh, amendment to an earlier designation bylaw from, I believe, the, the 1980s. Uh, includes a late 19th century one and a half story vernacular frame house. The application is to demolish an existing non-historic one story rear wing of the house. 
and to construct a new one and a half story rear addition in the same location. It also proposes to construct a new one story detached garage at the rear of the property and replace the front porch of the house and to paint the existing heritage house. So here is the view from the corner looking back. The new addition would be uh, where the one story portion is that you see to the right uh, of the existing house. And where you see this driveway in the center of the photo, that is where the one story uh, detached garage is proposed. And here's another view from the front and some views from the rear portion. So the, the one story section you see on the left is what's to be um, replaced with the new addition and the one story piece that you see on the right is actually to remain. And again, just another view from the street showing where the detached garage is. And here is the site plan. Again, in the um, hatched lines you can see on the house in the middle of the image, this is the new addition. So, it is essentially in the same location as the one-story portion, except it juts out a little bit towards Robinson Street. And then the dark gray towards the left is the one-car garage. Here is the new uh, roofs viewing here. Um, they're also proposing three skylights on the existing house. Staff does have some concerns in terms of the addition of skylights, um, especially on the Robinson Street view of the um, of the existing heritage house, not on the new additions, but on the existing heritage house. So that is something we've included. Um, I've made a little slight change in the staff recommendation you'll see in the PowerPoint presentation, slightly different that's what, uh, what's in your agenda. So here's a view from the front. Again, the existing heritage house is to remain, but the, new, the existing porch, which is non-heritage, will be replaced with a new porch with stone walls and a stone planter. Um, and you can see to the right-hand side the new addition um, just jutting out slightly at the rear. This is a view from Robinson Street. Again, a more contemporary addition. This is not in the Heritage District, so the same guidelines do not apply. What we're looking for here is to ensure that there are no heritage attributes of the existing Heritage House that are to be um, removed or negatively impacted. So again, um, they are proposing something a little bit more contemporary, but they are using traditional materials such as cedar uh, shingle cladding and a stucco at the bottom. And they've also used traditional uh, gable roof line at the back and the new addition as well. Coming around to the rear, there is a more contemporary dormer inserted at the back and sliding doors on the first story. On the right-hand side, this is the existing wing that's to remain, but a new um, set of wood French doors are proposed. And then this is the view from the south. Here are the elevations and plan of the one-car garage. Again, quite simple with cedar shingle cladding and a standing seam metal roof. And here's a view along Robinson Street of the streetscape um, showing the new garage next to the existing house. So in terms of the heritage house, uh, sorry, assessment, um, the house and all of its designated heritage attributes is to be conserved and restored where necessary. Um, there is the, they're repainting it and re, um, rebuilding the front porch, which will be an improvement for the heritage house. The new addition is to the rear of the house. It's lower in height. It's considered to be compatible with and distinguishable from the heritage house. So again, we are not using the any district guidelines here. Instead, we use the standards and guidelines for the conservation of historic places in Canada, which are federal guidelines. And um, these are some of the terms that they use to determine whether or not an addition uh, is appropriate for a heritage resource. There were minor variances approved to legalize existing conditions of the house and to permit the construction of the new addition and the detached garage. Um, the, again, that was approved by the Committee of Adjustment and Heritage Planning staff had no concerns with those minor variances. Again, there are concerns with placement of skylights on the existing house, which we would um, recommend that we work out through the minor details with the applicants um, at a later stage. So this is why you do see in um, a different color here, the sort of brown yellow color, we've recommended staff recommendation to approve the application, but that final details on the cladding doors and windows, including rooftop openings, um, such as skylights or maybe a possible dormer if that was a different option, uh, be approved as heritage planning staff for final approval. So with the committee support, this is something we would deal with um, at, a, at a later date through, through staff, um, but we're also happy to hear comments from the committee on this as well. 
And the second one is, again, that materials be removed, um, that are to be removed as part of this proposal be made available for salvage. And I'm happy to answer any questions on that one. Thank you, Carolyn. Um, I'm glad you've, um, you've picked up on the, um, the skylights. Uh, I know it's not a district and it is the side yard, but we are, uh, it is suggested in most of the guidelines that we avoid having skylights visible from, from, from the street. So I'm glad you've sort of picked that up and you work with the applicant on that. Um, so, uh, Councillor Duddock, I think you indicated you would like to ask a question of um, Carolyn. Actually, Mr. Chair, I don't so much have a question as a comment. Unfortunately, the staff presentation was not visible from a virtual aspect. The first item was, this one was not. I could follow along in my agenda, but just if maybe the IT or whoever uh, could make sure that the following item is visual uh, for those in a virtual basis. And uh, so I just offer that. Okay, thanks for that comment. I'm sure somebody will pick up on that. Um, okay, any other questions or comment? Brenda. Uh, thank, thank you, Attorney Mr. Chair. I have a couple questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you. I just have a few questions to pick up from the site visit that we had. I'm curious. Um, one was on the uh, the fence line. You, you mentioned, let me rephrase my question. You mentioned that there some steps were made through the Committee of Adjustment to legalize existing conditions. I'm wondering if those included final discussion on where the fence is going to be placed for the house. There was some discussion it was going to have to move in. And I'm wondering about the drainage issues. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair, to Brenda. So um, I, as I understand that the fence is to be removed, and I don't think there were any approvals to um, allow the fence to be there in terms of the minor variance process. Mm -hmm. um, perhaps the applicants can speak to this, but I, it's my understanding that that fence needs to be removed because a portion of it is on town property. So the fence that you see today that we saw in the site visit would be removed, and if they were to install another one, they would need a minor heritage permit for that. And through that process, I think they would be looking at, um, at drainage. But perhaps the applicants can provide a little bit more details on that. And uh, if I could just provide a comment as well, uh, looking at this home and uh, being walking the property, I, I do think it's important that we we consider as we have intensification happening in the city and as they or the town, pardon me, and as they abut uh, existing neighborhoods, that we look at the step down process from certain heights to soften the buffer or create a buffer between the new higher or mid rise homes and the traditional homes, because it's very evident when you walk this property and when you look in the photos that uh, I think many of the existing neighborhoods feel loomed over and are lit for through many hours of the day and, lack, and have lost the privacy of their homes as well. Thank you. Okay, Brenda, thank you for that. Any other questions of um, Carmen? Nope. Is there anyone appearing for, so George? Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chairman. Through you to Carolyn, the, the, the requested addition to your uh, recommendation, including rooftop openings. What? How would you? How would you expect to proceed with, with discussions? And uh, through you, Mr. Chair. Our, pra our practice, excuse me, our practice. Yep. Uh, I think has been always to, and and almost the guidelines I've ever had anything to do with have always said no skylights on on frontages at least, and perhaps in the rear, but that's, sorry, I interrupted you. No, no, I, I interrupted you, George. Um, so yeah, so that, again, this isn't in the district, so we don't have specific guidelines applying, but is a general rule of thumb for heritage properties. And this one specifically, um, you know, a lot of the, the, the sort of way of going about this uh, addition and designing it is something contemporary that's been added, but restoration of the existing. So um, the idea from staff's perspective would be to eliminate more of the contemporary additions to from the, being added to the heritage portion of the house, so just having that more in the new addition. So um, another way of perhaps getting light in there, if there are concerns from the owners of wanting to get light in that space, we could look at something that would have been more uh, appropriate historically for that heritage house, such as a dormer. Um, so this is what we're, we're keeping it a little bit open, um, open to uh, the committee's recommendations on this as well. But I think generally speaking, 
We try to make sure that skylights are not easily visible you know, from the street on the heritage portions of the building, mm -hmm. and they're kept more to the rear. Obviously, this is a very small little home, so the main uh, roof that you see from the street is the one on the north, yeah. um, so where the two skylights are proposed. So I think that's where our biggest concerns lie. Yeah, and I, I think it'd be quite evident from because of the scale of the house and the surrounding right. buildings, quite evident. I, quite, I, quite frankly, I'd be opposed to it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, George. Um, okay, uh, no other questions of Carolyn? No comment yet. Um, so is there anyone appearing on behalf of the applicant? Mr. Chairman, we do not have anyone registered for the applicant. No? Okay, good. So that's, we're confined to the board now. Jerry? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you. Um, regarding the, the skylights, I agree with Carolyn that <coughs> the suggestion would be to explore more heritage appropriate ways of intervention on the heritage house. So uh, I think the skylights are really uh, an important issue here as well. This is a part four house and it's on Robinson Avenue. So it's a it's a, a transition street, a little close to my heart because uh, I was uh, young on the corner of uh, Reynolds and Robinson and the house is no longer there, that beautiful carpenter's house. So anytime there's something on Robinson Street that's heritage, my, you know, my, my antennas go up. Uh, the addition is a bold and playful intervention on, heritage, on the heritage home. It is mostly surrounded by uh, the bigger players all around it. So I can see why it wants to make something of a, a survival statement. Um, it's done all the correct architectural exploration of uh, sympathetic massing and scale, has played with the forms, uh, bold and abstract, on the heritage theme, uh, the North Elevation, Robinson Street, where all the big players seem to be on now. Um, a view straight on the east facade shows the heritage home intact uh, with the new addition poking out on the north, so not, not very visible if you get the straight on view. Uh, the exercise of retaining horizontal datum lines is rigorously done on the ground plane of the west elevation uh, where that new form uh, pops out. And the south elevation has the characteristics of the asymmetrical Oakville vernacular that we often refer to. Um, the architectural expression of the new edition is bold and abstract, but it does derive from a play of the existing forms. Uh, it may not speak to everyone's preference. Um, you know, we usually like to see larger soffits and a little bit more detail, but it does play by all the rules uh, for heritage intervention. I would suggest, however, that given the bold forms uh, distinct from the heritage house, that the color palette and cladding materials and texture be very much same or similar to the existing house, um, and in this way ease the integration of the heritage and the contemporary forms. So I think color, integrating the color of the new forms into the existing is a really important element to, to bring it all together and to marry it somewhat. And that's all I have to say, Mr. Chair. Okay, Jerry, would you be happy with the, the, the normal uh, authority that we give to staff in our recommendation for staff to hear that and to, and to include it in the way they handle it? Oh, absolutely, Mr. Chair. Full okay. confidence in, in staff being able to handle okay. the comments. So Carolyn has heard that. Any other comments from anyone? If you could, Carolyn, put up your new recommendation. So yep, I'll ask IT to put up the last, what it is that we're last slide together. of the presentation. I hope Kathy can see that at home. <laughs> okay, so it's in A that you've made reference to the, the roof fenestration. And, and you've heard what we've said there. It's, it's, it's a side yard, um, but it is visible. It's not a district, but it is a part four house. So the skylight would be the last option, I think, is what the committee is telling it. <coughs> Okay, so we have a staff recommendation. Is there any further discussion on it? Would somebody like to give me a motion? Councillor Gittings, thank you. And the motion is essentially the staff recommendation. 
Is there any further discussion on the motion? Is there anyone opposed to the motion? Seeing only one, the motion is carried. Yep, yep, no, I hear you, Jones. So, but the motion is carried. Thank you very much. So the next item on the agenda is item 4.3, which is 1118 Lakeshore Road East. And again, that's, that's Carolyn. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. So this is another part four property located on Lakeshore Road East, um, just at the, near the intersection of Burgundy and Lakeshore Road. The property is designated under Part 4 of the Heritage Act, so the bylaw is 1993-023, and it was designated for its circa 1866 two-story Italian at Stucco House. And the application is to do several things. Uh, first is to demolish three rear wings of the existing house in a detached shed. Um, so these are portions of the house which are not included in the designation bylaw, including some more contemporary additions. Secondly, it's to construct a new garage addition in front of the existing garage, construct a new one-story uh, wing to the rear of the house, and as well a new covered walkway and porch at the rear of the house. And in the rear yard, construct a new accessory building and make some alterations uh, to the existing heritage house. So just looking at it, um, here you can see the uh, property outlined in red, so you can see the aerial. Uh, the yellow portion that you see in the right image uh, is a section of the house that is designated heritage. So our main focus is to ensure that there is no negative impact on the heritage resource. Again, showing the property from the street. So the heritage resource is a two-story portion that you see uh, with the, the gabled roof line, the L-shaped gabled roof line that you can see there in the center with the porch, as well as a two-story sunroom addition that you can see just hidden behind that tree to the left of the Heritage House. The rest of it uh, that you see, the, the coach house and everything to the rear, uh, are later additions which are not included in the designation bylaw. And just to note as well, this is not a CHL. <clears throat> so this shows a bit more clearly. The yellow portion is to be retained. Uh, that is the heritage portion, and then the red portions that you see are to be removed or, or altered. So just to go through the heritage attributes, which are in your um, agenda in the staff report, and as well included in the heritage impact assessment, but they are the L-shaped plan of the circa 1866 farmhouse, the round-headed double-hung windows and operational shutters on the front and west elevation, the richly defined cornice on the L-shaped farmhouse, the circular medallion in the north-facing gable, the column-like detail and side lights of the main entrance, the shallow roof pitch, and the ornate front porch, as well the two-story sunroom at the east end of the house. So in terms of assessing this uh, proposal, all of these uh, heritage attributes are to be retained. And you can see them in more detail um, in these images. So in the top left-hand side, that is the heritage resource to be retained and restored. To the right are showing Additions uh, to the rear that are to be removed, including, uh, oh, I shouldn't say including, the existing garage is actually to be retained but added to. So you can see here on the bottom left-hand image, this garage will remain, but it would be added to uh, with another three-car garage in front of it. So keeping a similar view from Lakeshore Road, um, but it will be a larger building uh, to the back. And then looking in the far right, uh, this pool area and the wing that you see at the back of the house there would be replaced uh, with a new one-story addition, as well as a covered walkway and porch area at the back. This is just showing again from the back, uh, sort of splicing these two photos a little, together a little bit, a little difficult to see, but this is the two-story sunroom to be retained. In the center portion on the bottom, um, where the set of three windows are, they are proposing to install two, a set of French doors to provide access to the rear yard. So those are a couple changes on the existing um, sunroom. This is the site plan, a little bit difficult to see. I've zoomed in on the right-hand side. Um, it's probably easier to see this in your agenda, a lot of details, but essentially the, from the earlier image you saw where the yellow portion to be retained, um, this is showing all the details of the new additions to be added to the rear, as well as an accessory building at the back for a, a new pool area. 
So from the front, um, and again, this is our largest concern is what's happening directly around the Heritage House. Everything you see on the left-hand side, uh, left half of it, I should say, is the Heritage House and sunroom that's to be retained. They are proposing a new chimney on the sunroom wing that you can see in this drawing. Then on the right-hand side, you see the new portion of the garage, which is still set back from the front of the Heritage House, and a new breezeway, enclosed breezeway connecting the two. Uh, that is set back quite a ways where it's, it's almost at the back of corner. It's at the back corner of the Heritage House. So it's a little difficult to see in this uh, elevation view, but it is set back. This is looking from the east. So you can see the sunroom wing on the far right with the proposed chimney. And then you can see the large addition um, going out back. So it is one story for the most part, and the height is lower than the Heritage House and then drops down uh, towards the rear. This is a view from the rear. So the, most of that is living space. And then the left-hand side where you can see the stone material uh, is a covered walkway. And you can see the rear of the garage on the left-hand side. And just another view showing sections of, of this area. And then looking from the west, uh, you can see here where the two garage portions are. So the existing gable um, is on the right-hand side, and the new portion would be the left-hand side, creating two gables there for the garage. And you can see it's still quite set back from uh, the front of the Heritage House. And then the remainder of the new addition is on the right-hand side. And this is the uh, accessory building proposed in the rear yard. Here are a couple of renderings. Um, they don't show everything in terms of ex exact, like that breezeway does look a little farther forward, it would be pushed back. In this area, they are proposing um, a stone cladding. Staff has made some recommendations on the details since not all the details have been finalized as part of this application. So we have included several conditions to ensure that we're all going in the, the same direction in terms of materials and design details. <clears throat> so we have um, some recommendations related to that breezeway as well as some of the treatment um, of, the, of the new addition. And as you can see here too, one of the recommendations um, was related to the stone that's proposed in the bottom of the new addition. There are no concerns with it on the new addition, but we would like to have it not included on the sunroom wing. So as you can see, it wraps around the sunroom wing. We would want to see the existing cladding uh, retained there. So we've made a notice of that as well. Here's a rendering showing it from the rear. Again, this is farther away from the Heritage House. And another rendering from the west showing the garage wing. So again, the focus is on the impact of the part four heritage attributes. It is a rather large addition. Um, with this one, again, we're not dealing with district guidelines. We are dealing with a part four bylaw as well as the uh, federal standards and guidelines, which we have used to assess the application, as has the Heritage Consultant. Um, hopefully you had a chance to review the Heritage Impact Assessment, quite a bit of detailing in there, assessing it. Um, and these heritage attributes, which were identified by the Heritage Consultant, um, are listed, um, but taken from the bylaw itself. Uh, these are to be conserved. Staff will also be working on an amendment to the designation bylaw just to ensure that the bylaw is up to date, is it is about 20 years old. And so it's one of our bylaws that needs to be updated. So again, in terms of the uh, assessment of it from a heritage perspective, the new additions are to the rear of the heritage house. They are lowered in height. The material choices are to be finalized. Staff have made recommendations regarding what's proposed, which is stucco um, and stone material. There were minor variants um, a minor variance application that went to the Committee of Adjustment on this application. It was uh, denied by the Committee of Adjustment. Um, these minor variances were not directly related to the heritage resource. They were not, uh, the concerns that the Committee of Adjustment had were not ones that the heritage planning staff shared as much as they were mostly related to what is happening at the rear of the property and not directly related to the heritage building itself. So um, in terms of those minor variances, that's another application process that has to be dealt with separately. So today we're just looking at the heritage permit and the impact on the part four heritage house. So the staff recommendation is to approve the application, but is conditional upon some final details of materials and design details um, being sorted out. So I have them all here. I'll just take you through them briefly. Um, so A, uh, this is at the original exterior walls 
of the heritage house be retained. So when a new addition is being added on, we want to ensure that in the future, if that addition was to be removed, that the heritage house is still there. So this ensures that um, they keep the existing exterior walls as much as possible and use the existing openings to connect to the new addition. Uh, B, the stucco cladding be a three coat stucco on the new additions. C, that the stone cladding proposed in the new additions be a natural material. D, that the north wall of the enclosed breezeway be clad in either wood or natural stone cladding to provide a distinction between the heritage house and the new additions. So it doesn't just go from stucco to stucco, there's a break in between in terms of materials. E, that the north entrance of the breezeway be designed in a manner and a scale that's less prominent than the front entrance of the original heritage house. So as they propose, it's a large circular door. Um, there's been different materials proposed on it. So we just want to make sure that uh, whatever exact door design comes through, we want to make sure that it's, it's not more prominent than the original heritage entrance under the front porch. F, that the stone veneer base be limited to the new additions and not be added to the historic sunroom wing, which I pointed out earlier. Uh, G, that the new chimney on the sunroom addition be constructed of brick and have a design and scale that's in keeping with the heritage character of the wing, because again, we don't have final details on that design of that chimney. And that final details on the new cladding, windows, doors, and trim be submitted to the director of planning for final approval, um, and that the materials be removed as part of this proposal um, be made available for salvage by the owner as there are some portions that are to be removed. And I should note actually there at H, um, the last two words of H should not be in there. Um, that was updated in your staff report. So please go with the staff recommendation that you have in your um, agenda and not the one on my, um, on my, on the screen. It was a last minute change. Otherwise the recommendation is the same. And I'm happy to answer any questions, and I believe the applicants and the heritage consultant uh, have joined us this morning as well. Okay, thank you, Carolyn. Well, this is an interesting one um, because, as you're all aware, the Committee of Adjustment uh, denied the application for the variances. And that has resulted, of course, in, in a process of appeal. Uh, but before that, the parties are trying to resolve the issues. They'll be resolving it with council because the Committee of Adjustment has made its ruling. But if you watch the Committee of Adjustment of November 1 uh, on YouTube, you'll have noticed that there was legal representation on both sides of the fence. So what's happening now is there's some legal discussion about trying to find uh, a middle way, trying to find an acceptable uh, solution to the application with respect to variances. And of course, Committee of Adjustment has uh, the zoning, it has the Planning Act, it has provincial policy statements, a whole pile of stuff and a huge toolbox with which to deal with them. We have a 30-year-old bylaw that only speaks to the main house. That's the only thing we can focus on today, the only thing. The Committee of Adjustment process is a separate one from ours. In fact, the way things stand, if we approve this application, they can't build it because they don't have the approval for the variances that they requested. But that process is operating separately. What's important for us today is to deal with the heritage element and to deal with the application of the part four designation that we have. And you'll notice staff has made nine uh, provisions uh, in its recommendation for us to pick up on, which is more than we would normally expect to see and more specific than we would normally expect to see. And the reason for that is when the legal discussions start to get underway, we want to be sure that heritage doesn't get forgotten, that the heritage approval that we are recommending to council or not, but that, that heritage approval states quite specifically what the heritage issues are and that they don't get lost in the legal shuffle. So it's a bit of a strategic uh, game that we're playing today, um, but it is an important element in dealing with this overall application. So having said that, <laughs> I will then ask if anybody has any questions, either of me or of Carolyn. Councillor Gittings. I appreciate the explanation. I guess a question for staff in terms of uh, the five variances that are going to be uh, going to council um, 
are we able to pass this today? Are we better off deferring it, pending those decisions? I'm just wondering how intertwined uh, those decisions will be with these. <clears throat> Through you, Mr. Chair, to Councillor Giddings. So there are um, two separate processes, as the Chair noted, um, and really the concerns of the Committee of Adjustment were not shared by the Heritage Planning staff as they are a bit separate. They're more related to the additions to the rear of the Heritage House and not any direct impact in the Heritage House. So from my perspective, um, we feel that in planning, this is still appropriate to take this heritage permit th through at this time uh, to get a recommendation from the committee and, and from council on this application. Again, as the chair noted, if there are significant changes that come through the committee of Ad adjustment process that make changes uh, to the, the design of the addition or whatnot, those would still have to get amended through a future heritage permit, or approved rather through a future heritage permit. Um, so there's still a process in the future that might happen in from heritage, but at this time what we are looking at is the application we have before us today. So I think from our perspective it's still appropriate to make a recommendation on the heritage permit that you have before you today as they're two separate processes. I appreciate the clarity. Yes, and just to add to that, I mean the, the Vice Chair and I had the same concern, should we just defer it? But if we do that, then there's no heritage input. Um, if, if we deal with it today and we have this specific list of recommendations, it gives us a little bit more leverage in, in managing the outcome of the discussions around the Committee of Adjustments rejection. Okay, thank you, Council Gettings. Any other questions of Carolyn George? <coughs> Through you, Mr. Chair, does it help if we were given some understanding of what the minor variances involve, does that make any difference to us or not? Because we, we're sort of talking of, of vague uh, minor variances, but do they affect the, the rear portion of the side or the heights? Uh, we don't know. Does it, does, do we need to know? Does it help us? I guess that's the question. I think, I think they're listed in the, in the report, aren't they? The, the, the minor variances that they seek, are they not usually there? Yeah, through you, Mr. Chair, they weren't uh, all listed in this report, again, um, just because they were a bit separate from the heritage permit process. But to answer George's question, um, they were uh, side yard setbacks and the depth of the uh, addition, so the, the, like the length and the depth of it, uh, the overall lot coverage as well, and I think the um, residential floor area ratio as well. So the bulk of it was really about um, the size and massing and setbacks of that uh, of the rear additions going on behind the Heritage House, which again, from our perspective, because they were happening to the rear, um, we didn't have as many concerns on that, but there were none related to anything um, directly around the Heritage House, if that helps. Yes, and it is important to note that the Committee of Adjustment looks at this thing through a different lens from Heritage, um, so their, their, their concerns are different. But it's, it, thank you, George, for just bringing that out. Any other questions of Carolyn? No? Okay. Now, we do have um, a delegation. And Councillor Duddock, I'm not missing you. I can see you on the screen. And so I guess if you were to leap up and down, uh, <laughs> I would for sure notice you. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Um, so we have, uh, Madam Secretary, we have a, a delegation on behalf of the applicant. Are you going to log them in? Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, appearing for the applicant is Stephanie Mat Mataviva, the agent, and with GSA, GSAI, and Chris Yush Yushiyama, the heritage consultant for the property owners. Okay, thank you, Stephanie and Chris. I can see you both on the screen. So whichever one of you wishes to speak, speak now. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Chair. If I may, I'll start. Uh, so for the record, my name is Stephanie Matviva. I'm a planning consultant with Glenshaw Associates acting as agent on behalf of the owners of the property. So just to confirm, we did prepare a presentation. Um, thank you, Carolyn, for the presentation. At this time, from a planning perspective, I have no further comments and I will pass it over to Chris if she has anything further to add. 
Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Chris, have you anything to add? Uh, so I'm Chris Uchiyama. I'm uh, a principal at LHC, uh, Heritage Planning and Archaeology. And uh, I, I'd just like to thank staff for the presentation. I think she's covered all of the, the key points that we would have covered, so we won't uh, take up your, your time with another presentation, but I'm happy to answer any questions from the committee. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions of Jerry? Thank you, Mr. Chair, through you. Um, Chris, I just wanted to ask a question from a heritage perspective. Uh, what are your comments uh, regarding the uh, aesthetics of the uh, rear intervention for this house? I know that uh, we are relegated to to um, discuss the uh, importance of uh, retention of all the attributes of the heritage home. But just as a curiosity, I'm asking for a little indulgence here, uh, what your comments are on the, uh, on the aesthetics of the, the uh, intervention. Thank you. Uh, and thanks for that question. I, I, I think that um, from a heritage perspective, when I'm looking at the aesthetics of the rear, um, it's clearly, um, it has a clear contrast from the, the heritage itself. Um, interestingly, what's visible in the rear right now when we're looking at existing conditions, um, the, the heritage attributes aren't really visible from the rear at this time. So um, based on existing conditions and comparing the new, from a heritage perspective, I don't think it has, um, we didn't find that it has a, had a, an adverse impact. It was sort of a neutral impact, um, but we certainly did feel that it was um, distinctive so there's there's no confusion in terms of um, whether it's you know part of the original heritage building itself okay thank you any other questions of the delegation nope thank you both very much for your uh, participation so is there anyone else that we know of I can't see anyone in the audience, so oh, I guess there's nobody else if there's no other registered delegation. Right, confined to the board, discussion. Any comments from anybody? Jerry? I'm taking up a lot of the airtime, Mr. Chair, um, but um, thank you through you. Um, I think Carolyn has captured everything very nicely that we've discussed in the previous reviews of this application. And, um, you know, I think we have to remind ourselves that in Heritage, we're dealing with the impact primarily from the public realm, uh, the street of car and pedestrian. And, the, and uh, in the back and forth with this application, it appears that most of the Heritage characteristics of the 1966 house have been maintained uh, and or restored and retrofitted uh, on the lakeshore front. Um, although it would have been wonderful if all of the heritage as, uh, stages of the house could have been maintained, it's not feasible for the, se uh, for the successful adaptive reuse of this property. Um, regarding the re-addition, um, you know, I, I watched a little bit of the Committee of Adjustment uh, review of this and, and it has not been approved. Um, we understand there's not support for the size and proximity to the neighbors, uh, for the long wings uh, that project well into the rear of the property in an aesthetic that I think is foreign to the existing house. Although it has, uh, it, it does have a heritage uh, aspect. It's, uh, it resembles um, some well-executed heritage Canadian railway stations, Mr. Chair. That's, that's where we get some of that uh, aesthetic. Um, you know, with the heavy soffits and detailed articulations at the column meeting the roof. But I don't think it's a happy marriage at all um, with the, the style of the heritage uh, feature. But happily, on the public realm, uh, it's been very well done. The um, slopes are reflective and echoing of the existing house. So from what we can comment upon, I think, uh, from a heritage standpoint, I think it does the job for us on the front and in the public realm where we do still experience this home. Thank you for that input, Jerry. Thank you. Any other f further comments or discussions? Brenda? Thank you and through you, Mr. Chair. 
just wondering, uh, previously we had that we discussed uh, a home further along Lakeshore, and it, it's the one that's going to be moved closer to the road. And we had asked if there could be some sort of sign that's visible to passersby that would explain a little bit of the history. Will something like that be done for this property, or could something like that be done? So we, because that's one thing that really doesn't seem to have come through in the discussions is what's the history, the, the connection to the community of this home. Thank you. Interesting. Um, yeah. Any thoughts on that, Carolyn? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, to Brenda. They do have a, um, like a, a town bronze plaque, or at least they're eligible for one. I can't remember if there's actually one in the front currently. Um, but that was not part of the discussion is doing a, a historical plaque. It wasn't a recommendation of the heritage consultant, um, but also, you know, it's not always done commonly in, in all municipalities, but you're correct, it has been done uh, as part of other developments. So it's more typical as part of a development, which is, you know, um, severance or new lots created or a new condominium going in where there's a heritage house. So I think that's why it wasn't kind of triggered at this one, just because this is just a private property and they're making um, renovations. It's something, um, if, if the owners are open to it, that we can work with them, but it's not currently part of the staff recommendation. Um, again, we always want to make sure in those cases that it's along the street, skate, the street edge so that it's, uh, people aren't going onto private property to see these things. Um, but yeah, currently it's not as part of the staff recommendation. It's certainly something we could discuss uh, with the owners as a possibility. I guess it's interesting. Every part four house particularly has a story to tell. And uh, usually when we're losing bits of it, um, that's when we want to at least put some marker there to say what it was and what it had been. The Oldfield Historical Society has been doing an incredible job recently, and you should look at their website because they've got a whole list of the Park 4 houses, and you can click on any one of them, and up pops history because they've been getting a lot of students in and others to help them go through the records, do the search, and so on. And that's particularly, we'll be talking a wee bit about it later with the 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 the, um, the heritage conservation district update. There's been a huge amount of research done on that, which again will reflect on the historical society's website. So that's one place for it. But you could almost say that every part four deserves some kind of sign outside to say what it is. But we're doing it electronically. But um, Carolyn's heard what you've said. That that's uh, something worth following up. And, and through you, Mr. Chair, just one note on that. They do have a his Oakville Historical Society plaque as well on the front of the house, yeah, too. Yep. Yeah, they do. They do. Okay, any other comments? Okay, would somebody like to give me a motion to approve the staff recommendation, which is quite extensive? Councillor Gittings, thank you. Is there any further discussion on that motion? Is there anyone opposed to that motion? The motion is carried. Thank you very much, everybody. It's never a dull moment, is it? There's always something different, some new twist to what it is we have to do. Okay, we're now into item five, which is information items. Uh, 5.1, the Heritage Conservation District update. And I see that's Kirk. A number of us were able to attend the open house, uh, the sort of meet and greet there, and that was really very informative. It was really good to see. So anyway, over to, over to you, Kirk. Uh, thank you, and through you, Mr. Chair. Good morning, committee. It's great to see everyone today. And uh, just a quick update on the Old Oakville Heritage Conservation District study that we have underway, and it's an update to that, to that, um, that guideline. Uh, we hosted a public information meeting on December 6th in the evening at Lusk Hall, St. John's United, which is one of our favorite meeting spaces down in the community. And, and uh, there were some familiar faces there and some new faces also, maybe 30 participants, uh, which is a great number. And the purpose of the evening was really to introduce the study to the broader community and to, uh, to introduce our consultants and to provide an overview and a discussion around um, what we're intending to achieve through that work. Uh, and there was also an open house component for some more intimate one-on-one -on -one conversations around some panels. We we're also uh, launching our survey on the district update as well the um, story map, which is an opportunity for uh, stakeholders or participants to add information and to share their knowledge of, of um, and their experience in the district. And that'll all feed into the study and will help shape the guidelines that will come forward 
from that. Uh, so it was really, I think, a, a great meeting. Um, as mentioned, we did have some, some key stakeholders present, uh, the Oakville Lakeside Residents Association being a, a, a major stakeholder and information provider to the study. Uh, and it's something that was recognized and discussed and, and certainly uh, a really important part of the work that's being undertaken down there. Uh, I would encourage everyone uh, here and also who's tuning in to check the, the website, which will be updated with the meeting information and links to the survey and to this, it's called a story map. So it's a visual representation that you could add, add to. Uh, and then, so that would be an interesting way for people to participate and you could, you could share that around with your, your uh, heritage colleagues. As well, there'll be f uh, coming forward additional stakeholder engagement, again, to, to, uh, to work with um, some of the churches down there and, and to continue our work with the Residents Association as well. There'll be further updates at our next meeting. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Kirk, for that. Thank you. Um, well, okay, we don't usually have questions or information items, but <coughs> you're, you're welcome to go ahead. Full of questions. Uh, just want to thank staff for coming out. There was a uh, pretty good representative from the community, and as you mentioned, the local residents association. The there was mention at the present. Uh, there was mention at the presentation of the QR code. Has that been loaded as yet? I didn't see it on the website for the project page yesterday, just in terms of being able to uh, direct residents through social media or through newsletters. I would just like to get that out to them. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I was just on the website this morning and it has not been updated with the study materials, but we'll be able to share that, that QR code. There are links to the survey already on the website. Uh, so. the and the story map, yes. So the QR code is the panel at the meeting, but access to, to provide information can be done directly through the website and the links that are provided there. So is it worthwhile waiting for the QR code to go up just so we can have the uh, project page complete for people that go there with the presentation from the meeting and so on? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, the, yes. If, if you're looking for a complete web page, that, that's not available yet. The meeting minutes and, and the presentation will be loaded up uh, shortly. Um, like, like I mentioned, the survey and the story map links are present and there'll be additional, if the QR code would facilitate that, we put that up as well. So check regularly. Check regularly. We can, uh, we can advise the committee when it's updated and then we can, we can go from there. Greatly appreciated, thanks. Yeah, that would be good, thank you. Okay. You've also received, thanks, thanks Kirk, I think. Um, you've also received um, the list of delegated heritage permits. And as usual, if you have any questions about any of these, ask Carolyn after the meeting. Can I have a motion to receive? I think Bob was keen to make that motion. Sorry, Ms. <laughs> Sorry? I have something. You have an additional information item. Only the clerk's department can add to the agenda. Go right ahead. <laughs> yes, Mr. Chairman, just on the, um, the committee, again, a reminder that the term of the, your existing term has been extended until your successors are appointed and we have the new committee in place. Um, staff anticipate the taking the report to council at the end of January. And thank you for, for your applications that you've made online. And I just wanted to mention as well that for the agendas, you will be getting the agendas a week earlier, um, starting in January. We're getting the agendas a week earlier. Um, is that doable from heritage planning staff? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, there's, there have been discussions with uh, our participants from the community on providing the Heritage Oakville Advisory Committee agendas a little bit farther in advance. There's an opportunity within our current structure and customer service uh, guidelines and how we want to keep to a, a timely approval um, procedure. Uh, there's some room there that we can work with to provide that information a bit earlier. So. Um, exactly how much? It'll be a few days, might not be a full week, but we're going to work on, on providing a bit more time. Because it's a tough one. I mean, it's good to get it earlier. 
I mean, for us or for members of the public, I understand that, but I understand the time it takes, and we don't want somebody's application to be pushed off to a later meeting simply because it couldn't meet that deadline, because that doesn't meet our customer service objectives. Um, so I'm, I'm glad you've, <laughs> you've, you've found a way to try and square the circle. Okay, thanks, Kirk. Okay, and I think, Bob, did you still want to make that motion to receive the information items? Thank you very much. Um, Anyone opposed to that motion? No, that's good. So the date and time of our next meeting is January the 31st, 2023. And as the clerk has said, although technically we expire when council expires, um, they kind of keep us on life support right through until council um, appoints new members to the committee. And I know that many of you have submitted your applications. Um, most of us are well past our best before dates as far as term renewals, but I'm sure council will will do its best to populate the committee with, with capable and competent people. Um, sometime, I guess, after our next meeting, I think that was what we were hearing, that it's, uh, if, if we're meeting on January the 20th, we're, we're meeting on January the 31st, council meets on January the 23rd. Will council have dealt with the appointments by then? Madam Clark, do you know that? Our meeting is the 31st, council meets on the 23rd. Will council be confirming committee membership on the 23rd? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I had in indicated that staff anticipate reporting to council for the, for the January meeting. Okay, so um, if you get an invitation to the meeting of the 31st of January, you'll know you're back on the committee if you don't hear. Uh, then, then that's fine. Okay, good. So our next meeting is January the 31st, whoever is here, and it's in the building, and we're not quite sure on the location. We keep getting moved around. Um, can I have a motion to adjourn? Brenda, thank you very much. Nobody's opposed to that, so I'll thank everybody again for the gift of the time today. Sorry, Mr. Chairman, who is And wish mover? everybody, that was from Brenda, wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you, everybody.